Alrighty, welcome to another tutorial for Odd Realm Beta. So if you are in the beta testing, this is version 10.0.16 of the Sacred Scrolls. Uh, the newest update has changed a lot of things from my last tutorials, and I haven't had a chance to run a new tutorial yet, but uh, it's good because um, Slep's changed a few things since uh, I was ready to start a tutorial, and uh, so now I'm going to catch up on those things for you. So I'm going to start a new tutorial. Uh, new realm just to make sure that we get the ground up stuff and then I'll do some of the more advanced tutorials later. I am going to do a human realm and I prefer to play in void lands so that's where I'm going to start my uh, campaign here. I'm going to look at these sets of void lands right here for something that I'd like to embark to and to check I'm going to look over here in the information about this particular area and figure out what I'm going to find here. So I'm going to find these Vitrex, Lopin, Rabbits, and worms. Worms is a new thing that is kind of exciting. I would like to find some bandits, though, if I can. So I'm going to look through these void lands and see if I can find a flat area that has bandits for me. Well, that's just bandits. I'd like more than just bandits, honestly. Oh, there we go. That's a lot of good stuff. Ooh, bandits and worms. No uh, Vitrax, but I'll see if I can figure out how to get some medium leather anyway. So this looks like a good spot, and I will start here. My, the name of my settlement is going to be the Slow Wilds. I have five settlers. I have all of these items in tow. Uh, the, the carrots and their seeds, some melon seeds, uh, some gooseberries, some potatoes. Those are all going to be important to cook. And we are going to depart. Now, for my start, I try and find a nice open area that's kind of flat. This is not providing me with much, much of an opportunity, but I'm going to start up here. This will be a great spot to start, and I'm going to build sort of a castle off of this space up here. The very, very first thing that I do is, uh, and the first thing you have to do really with the human start is to develop some of your saga in this new uh, edition. So if you look up here, this will take you to the saga overlay up in the right hand corner of the screen here. The saga overlay is this book. Uh, you'll notice it has an H hotkey. So I'm going to just hit the H and it will bring up the saga overlay. And I spend these tomes that I have. So tomes of industry, tomes of cooking, tomes of agriculture, and tomes of war. And I spend these tomes to advance myself through the saga eras. And so I have here in the industry, I can use one or two of my tomes of industry to buy some of these things. And then to do that, I just click on it, and then I click on the purchase right here. But before I even start this, I'm actually going to track my tomes. I'm going to pull up the inventory with I, and I want to see my tomes listed up here along with my water, cooked food, raw food, and ren. So I click on the tools, and then you'll see I have a list of my tomes here, and I'm going to hit tracking on all of these tomes. Now you'll notice I don't have an arcane tome yet, so I can't track those. But once I get the ability to, I'll show you how to make arcane tomes. That'll probably be in the next video. And uh, you'll see how I make arcane tomes. I don't even have to rely on a trader or anything like that. I can just generate arcane tomes. And it's, it's a pretty nifty trick to be able to do it. And I'll show you how to do that in the near future. But for right now, I've got my tomes tracked up here. I'll open back up my saga menu. First thing I want is this woodworking and the merchant or the market, those are my two that I get first off. And then from the cooking, I always take this one, the complex meals uh, one, because it gives me the ability to butcher animals. So this one gives me some basic cooking stuff. This one gives me the ability to butcher animals and use their meat. This one is the distillery, which can be useful, but this I find is more useful in the long run because I can make leather uh, items out of it as I find more and more animals that come across my map. Now, in the agriculture, I will normally use this first one to make a well because water is going to be very important. Again, I don't have any arcana tomes, but I will get those later. And I do have one war tome. And rather than getting the barracks out the door, I'm going to get this one that makes a wood trap door. I'm going to end up fighting things a lot anyway, and that will generate some tomes of war as we go through that then I can use to make the barracks. Or once I get the tomes of arcana, I can make a library and then I can make any books I want. And we'll, I'll show you how that works later on too. So now that I've learned the things with my tomes of industry, I can build some things. So I can hit B to build, and now you'll see I have the ability to build wood plank walls. But in this newest update, uh, 10, as of 10.015 and 10.016, you have to use these wood planks, which is kind of a new thing. So I'll show you how to get to that in just a moment. Uh, before that, I'm going to go ahead and set up jobs 
for my different uh, crew members here. And I hit the J to bring up this jobs menu right here. And now I have the jobs listed out. First off, I've got a miner and I'm going to need him to do some things for me. So I'm gonna set it to priority. You see here, I have priorities for my job, zero, one, two, three. I'm gonna set this to priority two, which means that it'll be done before any priority one jobs. Priority zero is for planning. Priority three is like, I want it done now. I want it done before you do anything else. And it won't stop a job that's in progress, but it will put that next on the job menu. So for this, I'm gonna use priority two to grab these boulders. And you can see I can just click anywhere. And even though these are on different Z levels, I can just click them and it'll grab uh, those particular stones just because they're visible like that. I do wanna warn you of one thing with mining. If I just grab like this, nothing will show up. But if I go down a Z level, you'll see that I have marked these all for mining and I don't want that. So I'm gonna undo this. And now in order to avoid that, you can hold down the left alt key and it will only affect this layer. So for example, this one over here that I marked before, if I hold down the left alt key, I can't mark it since it's on a different Z layer. But since I do want the miner to get that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. I don't really care about the Z levels for these. I'm just gonna scroll around the map and find a few of these rocks like this and just mark them for being dug up. Let's see, should be one or two more probably here. That's a void crystal. I'll save that for later because I don't need it right now. You'll see some little mermit up here as well. And that looks like all I'm going to need for rocks. Okay, next up, I'm going to go to my logging skill and I'm going to have my forester grab some stuff. Same kind of thing here. I'm going to grab this log because it's on a different Z level. It's still the only thing to log so I can get it. But with the trees, you want to make sure you get down to their base. So I'm going to go down to the lowest layer I can for these trees because I don't want to try and hack the tree off above this layer. Otherwise, it can start to do some nasty things where you're... Um, your forester doesn't like to try and cut them or it will give you a red marker for the logs here. You'll notice I'm still doing this at um, priority two. I kind of like having this stuff done at priority two. Oh, there's another rock I missed. Uh, just because that way I know that it's going to take precedence over other stuff that the uh, forester might be doing. And I'll show you how I use that to my advantage in just a moment. So those two are done. Last thing I'm going to do is set up a harvesting crops skill. I'm going to set this one at priority three because I want it to be done before anything else that the farmer is going to do. And I'm going to grab two of each type of fiber and then a couple of these bolletus mushrooms. Now you'll notice when I have the uh, harvest standing crop skill selected, it highlights the things that I can uh, harvest as crops. And so I'm gonna have him harvest a few of those things uh, before he gets started on making my actual farms. And I'll show you how to do those right now. Next thing I'm gonna do is set up my main building. I can't build any of these yet because I need the planks, but I do want it to actually appear. So I'm going to do it as a priority one job because I want it to be one of the last things that my guys do. And I'm going to click and drag and then to get the walls and not the whole area. So if I just let go now, it would be like the whole area would be covered. But what I want is just the walls. I'm going to hold down the left control button and you'll see it gives me a couple of things. First off, it gives me the information about the storage, whether or not it's full, and then who all of my guys are and what their jobs are. But also it makes the wall just the wall, not the whole building, just the wall. And so I can put that out as a wall and then I'm going to left or right click in these spots to delete the, the doors that I want going out of these things. So that's going to be my base area. This is where I'm going to have everybody kind of live inside of. And my carpenter and my stonemason should get to work on these as soon as they have planks. But now I need to make these planks. So what I have to do is set up a room that will allow me to make these planks. So to set up that room, I have to come over here and find the wood mill and then just select this area here. Uh, that will make a wood mill and the wood mill you'll see uh, the room appears here the rooms here on the map uh, This wood mill is going to be the area that I'm going to use to make those planks And I want to show you how that runs through so I'm going to right click on this wood mill And it will bring me to the room management, which means that I can rename the room I can see who's going to work in the room I can see what kind of things can be stored in the room which will come in handy and I can see whether or not the room's active. So right now the room is not active. It's got zero out of two occupants, but I know it will fill up because anyone with the carpentry skill will actually fill this room. So in, once I start time, this room will actually fill. And in order to do that, I'm gonna actually rename this room R1 for resources Woodmill. And that way I can keep them in order. I like to name all of my rooms kind of individual names that have these uh, tags in front of them for what I use them for so that they sort of stay in a logical order together. 
Okay, so that's done. Now to get the actual list of things, so I can either right click on the on the on the room in this room menu, or from this main screen I can hit G and that will bring up the room management screen. Now if I want to make something in this woodmill room, I need to bring up the actual overlay for um, creating things. So I hit K to do the production. So the production menu is right here. I hit K to bring up the production menu. And now you'll see I have my woodmill selected over here. A list of all of your rooms is going to appear here. I'm going to add a new job to this and I'm going to add a job for wood planks. Now you'll notice it's red and it's going to say this. I can't um, do this because there are no entities assigned to this room with carpentry skill. That'll be taken care of as soon as I start time. But there's also a problem with this missing prop, the required prop of either a wood workbench or a stone workbench for this room to work. So this job is going to generate on top of one of these two types of workbenches inside this room. So what I need to do is first I'm going to set up this job and then I'm going to make sure that I build one of these workbenches, which all I can build right now is the wood workbench. So I'm going to set up that wood workbench to build inside of this room. Now I have the wood planks job here. It's going to be built on the number of items in the world and it's going to check for wood planks. It's going to see how many wood planks exist in the world and then it's going to build. If there's less than one wood plank, it's going to create a job for wood planks, which is going to create five wood planks. Now what I want to do here is set it so that I never have fewer than 25 wood planks and that means I'm going to generate five jobs worth of wood planks. So if it checks and sees that there's less than 25, it's going to generate five jobs, which is going to generate five wood planks. So I'm going to do that and that job is set, but now it just needs that prop set up in the room to be able to work. So somewhere inside of these four spaces, I have to build a workbench which is this guy right here. Now you'll notice I can build a workbench. It only requires wood logs. Thankfully, I don't have to make wood planks before I can make the wood workbench. That would be kind of lame. Uh, but now I'm going to set it to priority three because I want this to be one of the very first things that my, uh, car my carpenters do is that they get over here and they make this wood workbench so then they can start making the planks that then allow them to make all of the other stuff that I'm going to need for this area. Then I'm going to set up some floors. Again, I need wood planks for the floors and I'm going to build this whole space in with floors. I don't want it to be rank three though. I want it to only to be priority one. And I'm going to leave a hole there for a ladder down and you'll see why in just a moment. Now I've made a room already, but I want to make a few more rooms before I let time get started. And that is going to be my farms. And this is an interesting kind of thought process here. I'm going to click on the farm right here and I'm going to build a five by five farm that is going to be my first farm. Now I don't like leaving my farms generically named, but I'm not going to rename them just for now, just to show you what happens. If I just click and drag over here, you would think it creates another farm, but it only creates this same farm over here. You can use this to your advantage later to have the same farm in multiple spots. So if you wanted to have a farm growing a particular kind of things, but on multiple different Z levels, you can use this to do that. You can use this as a trick to do that. But I do want a different farm. So you'll notice it says plus new. I'm going to hold down L alt and I'm going to click and drag again. And that gives me a second farm. So you can see now I have two farms. I'm going to hold down L alt again, put down a third farm, hold down L alt again, and put down a fourth farm. Now this one's a little cut off because it's missing some dirt blocks, which I'll have to take care of. And that'll be fine. I'll just um, build those in later, not a big deal, but I do have now four farms. And once I go back to the point where I've got these dirt blocks built in, I'll just click on this room and I can add more spaces. So if I wanted to add spaces to this room, I can. And remember, I don't, they don't have to be contiguous. They can be separated. It's not a problem. They can be separated by Z level. So I could make a, another bit of this farm down there. You'll see it's about the same farm. Don't actually want that there though. So these are my farm areas. And then one more thing I want to do is since I did actually spend the, the the tome on it, I'm going to go ahead and make a marketplace. So as soon as merchants could start coming, they will. Last two rooms I want to take care of, I'm going to put a kitchen area over here, and then I'm going to put a well house over here, and then I'm going to build in my pieces for those in just a moment. But since everybody's got jobs now and there's all plenty of stuff to get, do, get going, I'm going to go ahead and set time to running. And then I'm going to go to my room management queue and rename these guys to F1 crops. Yes, I know they're all crops, but I just call that one crops. This one's going to be F2 grains. 
This one's going to be three fruits. And this one's going to be F4 fibers. So I dedicate a whole farm to fibers off the bat. You'll notice my kitchen is red, and I'll talk about why that is in a minute, and I'll take care of it. My market, I'm going to set up to ZZ market because I don't need to see it. It just needs to kind of sit on the bottom. Don't really do anything with it. And then my well house, I'm going to change to E2 well house. And I'm going to change it to E2 because I'm going to change this kitchen to E1 kitchen. Okay, so the kitchen is red and we're going to see why. I'm going to right click and you'll notice that if I add a new job to the kitchen, which I want to do, I want to add all of these food items that I can cook to the kitchen. So I've got uh, potatoes, carrots, broccoli, cabbage. I think that's all I can cook. I could add wheat boiled, but you'll see here the problems. I have props. I need a fire pit or a stone stove. And for the wheat, I need a bronze cauldron or an iron cauldron. Well, that's not coming till later. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off because I don't need to add it in yet. But I should also add in bolletta's mushrooms because I am going to be picking some bolletta's mushrooms in just a little bit. Now you'll notice no one with the cooking skill is assigned to this room, nor is there a fire pit. And in this case, nor is there a bolletta's mushroom. So that's why it's showing up red. So let's go ahead and take care of the bits of that that we can. First off, we're going to build a fire pit right there in my kitchen. So that's inside of my kitchen. Good. And I'm going to set the priority of this to two. So in order to raise or lower priority, I'm going to hold down Y and you'll see I can see this priority one over this fire pit here. I'm going to click it and it'll raise it to priority two. So they'll do that before they do this other stuff. Okay. So then that means that that's all set, except that now I need someone that can actually cook in that room. In order to do that, I'm going to go, I'm going to hit L to bring up my settlers menu and I can drag this around by holding down the middle mouse button. That's what this little symbol means. I can hold the middle mouse button and drag it around. So I'm going to drag it around to the middle here and I'm going to hit skill permissions. And I'm going to look at the two guys I know are going to be the least busy out of everyone. And that's going to be my forester and my uh, farmer. And they, they tend to be the least busy out of everyone. So I'm going to click those two and enable cooking skill. Now later on, I'll make a, a dedicated uh, cook, but for now that will do. And you'll see that it did generate a job. So it generated a lettuce mushroom. So I must have harvested a lettuce mushroom from somewhere. And now it generated that job right here. So we are ready to go. Now I can go back to my production menu and I'm going to set up all my farms really quickly because my, my farmer's been running around harvesting some random things from out in the wilderness. But now what I want him to do is actually to start planting some things. So I'm going to set up a, a carrot job. Ooh, I got a cabbage seed. Awesome. I hadn't had those before, so that works. Uh, so I'm going to plant some cabbages in there too because I can cook the cabbages as well. I'll look through for anything else. Doesn't look like I have anything else that I want to plant in my crops. I'm going to go down to my grains and do the same thing for wheat. Now wheat's all the way at the bottom. I don't want to scroll, so I'm going to hold down L shift and type wheat. And there we go. Now I have wheat added in here. I'm going to go to my fruits, do the same thing for melon. There's melon. So that's L shift to search. And then I'm going to do the same thing in my fibers. I'm going to search for twilight and glow light because I should have both of those. So those are both in. I like to set these to priority two because I like the planting to be done and also the harvest standing crops to be done more importantly than the harvesting the ground cover. So I'm going to go back through really quickly and set those up. The ground cover will be harvested. It's fine. It's not, a, it's not a big deal, but I do like these to be done first because it's important for them to go ahead and start growing. Harvesting. Okay. So my kitchen is set up to cook all of the stuff that I have ready at hand to cook. My wood mill is making wood planks. My well house is one I'm going to need to do the draw water from well. So once I do get a well in my well house, I'm going to want it to draw water. So if my water gets below 40. I'm going to create 10 jobs, which will give me 30 water uh, from the well. I'm also going to add a collect water. And if my water gets below 20, I'm going to create 20 of these. And I'll show you how I'm going to use that later. I just set this up. I set up a part of the room that's in water. And then they'll go and collect water from that area that's in water. And I'll show you how I do that later on as I build out more and get a little more advanced with some of the things that I'm uh, working on. And I like to set these to priority two and priority three so that they get, they make their way to the top 
if that's an issue, if I'm running low on water, I want to make sure that they are going and taking care of that water before some of the other things that they have going on, because it's a higher priority issue at that point. So I should have that all ready to go. And then my one more thing I'm going to do is set up the build for this well at priority three. So once I do get enough stone, they're going to go ahead and build that well, looks, which looks like they do have it. So they should build that build that well at some point. Now the next thing I'm going to do, since this is almost entirely covered in with uh, wood planks, I'm going to grab my miner and I'm going to go down one layer and mine this area out. Now you'll see I didn't make a mine up here, just down here. That's because I can hold L Alt, even if I select an area and then go down, if I let go, all of these areas in between would be covered with, uh, with the mining. But if I hold L Alt, it'll only get this layer. Okay, so I'm not going to do that right now because uh, I don't need to mine all the way down there right now. But now my miner will be digging out this area underneath. And that should set us up pretty well for the beginning of the game here. Uh, some other things to think about, I could build beds for my guys. That might be a little important as we're going along. I'm going to keep track of my tomes so that I know when I'm going to advance through my next saga areas. And I do have an awful lot of food, so that's pretty good, but not a lot of cooked food. So I need to make sure that I'm keeping track of all of the food that I have and how it's being used. Right now, my farmer and my um, my forester are really busy. My forester's just, you know, deforesting the entire valley over here. Uh, but once he gets done, he'll come back up here and he'll start cooking again. And that's an issue because they do like their cooked food. Cooked food is definitely better for them when they are trying to make, um, when they're trying to get their nutrition back up. Don't know where my well went, but I'm gonna make sure I rebuild it there at priority three. Hope they get over to it sooner than later. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the next thing to think about is just speeding up time. So I'm gonna speed up time a little bit and let them run their gig. There's my well, and it's got water a water build already in it, and so somebody's going to come back over here and start making some water too. Now you'll see the mermits are running around all over the uh, ground, and then I have this dugout area, so I'm going to do a couple of things. First off, I'm going to create a marker at the top here so that when I hit one, it will bring me back. So if I'm down in the mines and I hit one, it'll bring me back up to the top here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a group that includes every single uh, entity that I control. So I'm gonna create this group. I'm gonna right click on it and name it everyone. And then I'm going to right click on it again and tick all of these buttons off. And that will add everyone that exists and anyone who gets added to. So when I have a settler wave come in, they'll get added. When I tame creatures, they'll get added. And now I can select this everyone group by clicking on it or by clicking the number two. And I could come over here and take out these mermits if I wanted to. I'm just going to leave them alone because they're not really um, they're not really <laughs> doing anything to me. Whereas the Vitrax, man, the Vitrax will attack you and they are fierce. If you want some good battle components, the Vitrax are the way to go. I think that's it for now. I do have one tome of agriculture, so I'll show you my next path. After getting the, uh, the well house set up, I will tend to do the forestry next. And then I will do the um, farming agriculture after that. You get lots of tomes of agriculture early on. They happen pretty regularly. The one you're going to be waiting a lot on is the tomes of industry and obviously the tomes of arcane, which uh, arcana, which it will come later. And But I'll, I'll show you how to do those in the next video. So right here, I'm going to set up, well, I'm going to do one more thing to show you how to, how to move on to your next steps. I'm going to dig down and create my... Um, my mining area here. So I'm gonna have my miner dig out this next section here for me. I'm very regimented in the way that I keep all of these things together. So I'm gonna have him dig out these shapes because I like to keep the, the shapes of my rooms all kind of the same. And once he gets this done, I'll show you how I organize my uh, digging down further. So I have one tome of industry right now. I'm gonna wait for a second tome of industry. And once I get that, I'll be able to create my, um, I'll do move into the stone age so I can use um, stone tools and things like that. So my miner just stopped. I'm going to pause time for a minute just so I can show you what I do here. So normally when I create mining jobs to make a, 
a mine down, uh, like a mine shaft, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. Some people just will build ladders down, and you can build ladders straight through the rock without having to worry about it, and that will create a way for them to climb up and climb out. I like to build kind of a spiral shaft, and then that way they can walk back up, and I can put um, stairs at the end of each of the paths that they walk back up. I haven't timed it yet, but that's uh, that's just how I like doing it. So I, I create this three long stairwell like this. That's obviously on the next layer down. I'll go down one more layer, and create the next three there, the next three there, the next three there, the next three there. And I'll do this all the way down to 20. And that way I'm pretty sure that they're going to get to a stone layer. And that stone layer will allow me to get enough stone together for the first few things that I need that are stone related. So, you know, my stone anvil, uh, my stone, uh, my stone tools, different things like that. I really don't do wood tools. Uh, I don't really see much point in them. Uh, they don't really add much to the way that things get put together. So I'll just let that go. Now he's digging down and you'll see he digs three. Then he digs the next one. He digs out a third one there. Then he keeps going. Okay, I got another tome of agriculture. So I'll come down here and grab my farming two. Now I want to show you something here. I also, you notice I left this area open and then I dug down over here, which means that he can come climb up here and then climb up to the next. Ah, now I found a cave. So caves are a blessing and a curse, especially when you're trying to dig down. If you hit a cave directly with one of your, with one of your um, digs down, like, a, like the spiral staircase, if I hit the cave wrong, which I did in this case, uh, it's going to be hard for him to continue. He can't continue on because this area is down more than he is able to get to. So I'm going to have to be creative about the way that I get around this. I think what I might do is now just dig this area out like that. And that should let him get down to there. Okay, and then what I can do is build an ember rock block on this spot right there, which will be above that, but then even with this. Now, if you're having trouble keeping track of what I'm doing here, so I've got this coming down here. So I'm going to go back up. So I'm coming down there. That's my down. That's my down. That's the layer down, and so it should be even with this layer, but the problem is that it's not. It's lower than this layer, so what I need to do is go down one layer and build an ember rock block right there so that this will create a staircase to then descend down, and then I can build and back in these two spots right here also, and so it'll keep that spiral consistency. That's part of why I do that spiral is because it gives me some options when I'm going down so I'm not locked into something and then I have to dig out and around and, and back to uh, the spot that I'm at. So that's pretty much it. This should get you started uh, with Odd Realm. I hope that you have a lot of luck with it. If you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments. I'd be happy to field them. Uh, the next time I go, I'm going to talk about the first settler wave, what to do with them, how to uh, create a thaumaturge with them, and then how to get those terms of arcana, and then how to make a defensible position out of this uh, small area that you've started, as well as how to build some rooms so that you can build your... Uh, your settlement naturally rather than just having to rely on captured bandits or on uh, settler waves coming in. All right. Thanks for watching and happy odd roaming.